start sketching on the initial design concepts, it's that point where you've internalized all this information and now you actually have to turn it into something real. You actually have to make some decisions. You have to commit to an idea. And it's, it's actually, you know, it's much easier when the ideas are just possibilities floating out there. Once you start drawing, you start having to deal with, you know, entry and where the kitchen goes and how big to make things. And, you know, then you have to actually confront the reality of the site, what kind of topography we're dealing with, its relationship to how you arrive, how you move through it, and how you actually live there. So the schematic design presentation for the Outpost project is coming up real soon. I'm gonna be bringing you along with me. We're gonna head out to the island. We'll meet with the clients at their rental home so we can review the design concepts and then we'll head out to the site so we can flag those concepts on site and actually see how they marry with the topography. The site has been cleared since we were last out there. We flagged a primary building spot the last time we were there and since then it's been cleared. Now I've been sketching on this for a while in my sketchbook, but it's really time to take these abstract sketches and turn them into something that's real. We need to wed this building to the topography. So to do that, I've printed out the site plan. The design concept here, heavily influenced by the site, and there's a fair bit of elevation change at the location that we chose during our first site meeting. You can see that here, this is a two foot contour interval. So between each one of these contours is two feet of elevation change. So we know we want to knit this building to the landform. And to do that, I'm proposing to divide the program spaces up into these sort of tiny cabins. And that's gonna allow each the opportunity to react to the appropriate site force or feature. And I know from meeting with local contractors that it's very difficult to get concrete or any kind of fill material to the island. So what we might normally do on the mainland to fit a building to the landform, in other words, if we have a slope like this, what we normally might do is cut and fill. We would use this cut and move it over to this fill. Here, there's a lot of ledge. So the landform's not easy to manipulate. And equally, when we start cutting and filling on the uphill side, we're gonna be typically using concrete. So anytime we're burying a building in the landform, concrete is one of the best materials to use for that. So that's gonna be a difficult thing to do on this site. So a balanced cut and fill approach is not gonna work. So on this site, if, if this is our landform, the approach here is going to be Piers. So this is another reason for dividing the program up into smaller spaces so that each one of these spaces can react to and be influenced by the surrounding topography and landform. So we could set this building volume at that elevation. We can set this building volume at that elevation and likewise here. So to get started, knowing the program sizes and spaces, I'm just gonna start deploying these program elements where I think it makes sense on the site. So we know the driveway is coming in over here. So I know generically that I want to have a barn element sitting over here. This may be the parking space and a workshop area, and it may be the guest quarters. I haven't decided quite yet. This also sits to the northern edge of the site, so this will help to buffer northerly winds. And it, depending on how we shape this wall or how tall this wall is or what the roof form is, we can use it to bounce southern light into a protected courtyard here. Okay, so that's one element. Second element that we've been talking about is the sort of master suite. And we talked about the master suite being positioned to the north again here and also downslope. So this is a very private part of the site. It also has a great view aspect out to the water. And then we can use something like the master bath as a buffer piece to keep it even more private. So now positioning it in this location also buffers from those northeast winds that we had done on our site analysis. So we know there's a prevailing storm direction in the winter here. This is a more inwardly focused space, bedroom space, sleeping space. So this can be a real thick wall to the north and it can also capture the view out to the east and also act as a buffer to, again, a south-facing courtyard here. And that leaves the main volume of the house splaying out to the south like this. And I'm orienting this one in a north-south direction because I wanna be able to capture views out to the water here and also back to the forest here. And then 
as our sun moves like this from east to west, remembering this is north, east to west, we have this main living space is capturing all this sun throughout the entire day. We need some way of getting into this structure. So let's call this generically the entry here, entry, mudroom, laundry. Those program elements pair very well. Then we probably want to be able to drop our bags off for the kitchen. So the kitchen probably lives right here. This becomes the dining area. And whether the table is sited like this or in this direction is to be decided. And then probably the living area with a seating arrangement like this and a wood stove down at this end. So this allows this whole space then view and access to light. And then I think on the uphill side here, what I'm thinking is a deck. And this could be a really long deck. You can see as we have our topography sloping off in this direction, we need some transition element to get from this elevation up to this elevation, right? So if we're arriving at this elevation, maybe we have a set of steps that comes up like this, so we're arriving like this, moving up to the deck as a transition element, and then to the house here. And the house then acts as this filter to the view and a filter back to the forest here. Now, what I don't know is, you know, we have all this topography in here. I don't know what this is like. This is a two foot contour interval. So there's two feet between here and here, which means, you know, there could be boulders. There could be, I remember granite outcrops in here. So it'd be nice if there was something like that here that we could pick up and reference and really start to develop. I remember there's, you know, glades of trees in here. So again, something nice to reference. Now this isn't a big home. So when I'm dividing these spaces up, you know, I basically want these bars here to be kind of one room wide. So for the master and for the, for the barn piece here, I'm just going to call these kind of 12 feet wide. And I want to work with a module on all of these. So here I'm just choosing an eight foot module. So just to get us started roughly. So the master should be a little bit longer, kind of eight foot there, eight foot there. So parking, workshop, bathroom, bedroom, maybe the bed is here, looking out to the view like that. Bed could also be on this wall, or we could have closets on this wall. Now for the main living space, you know, a 12 foot wide volume, that's the width of my studio, basically. Uh, it's comfortable for a room, but for living spaces, I think it's gonna feel really tight. I think I wouldn't go any less than 16 feet here for this main living volume. And let's just call it 64 feet long. Let's just call it that for now. Now, if I made this a simple roof form of a shed, and this a simple roof form of a shed, this one's gonna feel really out of proportion. So I'm thinking like the shed, here really doesn't want to be the full, full width. So maybe the entry pod is really like this and may, or maybe it contains part of the kitchen here. And then this is dining and living. That is a shed form tilted that way. And then since we have guest quarters, maybe the guest quarters go in here and this becomes a powder room bathroom transition between the two. This creates a real diversity of experience out to the landform here, out to the water here. We've got a deck that we're using as entry. We probably need to pull this garage over. Probably want a water side deck. Maybe that's attached to the master, I'm not sure. I don't think I want it to go the full length of this living room because then the living room really has to look through the, the guardrail that would be have to be on the deck here. Uh, but this is going to require some further study, especially as we get out on site. Now we're going to be tweaking this as we go along. You can see I'm starting off with a real rough arrangement of spaces. So from here, I start overlaying different ideas. I'll typically get these plans to a certain point and then I'll take them into SketchUp, start developing those, and then they start informing each other. They're looking for a more contemporary building. So as I'm building the massing in SketchUp, you know, I'm, that says to me probably a combination of shed roofs 
Um, and then also flat roofs. So the flat roof pieces can act as transitions between these shed roof volumes. Shed roofs are an economical way to handle water, and they also allow us to build clear stories in here so we can capture light. You know, if we design this barn piece to be a shed roof, I really like it when there are, you know, if this is a tall wall of the shed and the shed is pointing sort of this way, um, I really like it when we can use that to bounce light into a southern courtyard. So this wall could actually bounce light into this courtyard here. Um, and equally, if we pitch this roof this direction, that allows sun back to, onto this deck. If this is a waterside deck, that allows sun. If we were to pitch the roof this direction, you can see it's going to just put that whole deck in shade for most of the day, actually. So, you know, there's advantages to these roof forms. And then as I look at this master roof form, you know, I could see, I could see this really orienting toward the view out that way. So we can use this to, you know, mimic the topography that's sloping down this way and also stand in opposition to it. Maybe we're referencing sails, you know, sailboat sails kind of thing, um, or, you know, flagged trees. You'll often see a tree that's, that's blown by the wind and it grows on sort of only one side here because the wind is always constantly shaping it, pushing it that direction. So there's some reference to the site using these roof forms as well. And it keeps it simple. You know, I think the complexity in this building relationship happens uh, with its relationship to the site rather than making an overly complex building form. As I think about this plan move here, when you enter, really, as I look at it in the SketchUp model, I think you really do want to enter and through to the view. So I think this master bedroom needs to slip up here. As I overlay this on the topography of the site, I think this barn piece needs to really slip down here. And you know, this piece, you know, this whole thing may need to shift in this direction. So it's a matter of studying these forms, going back and forth between the model and the plan, and then beginning to shift things. So as I shift the, the bedroom over, this diagram becomes a lot more clear. I think the guest suite could live down here. And then we have a, we have a, a deck element like this. Maybe this, this is the organic sort of piece. And then the barn can orient over here. I could see the garage being a bounding element here. This being a bounding element, the master suite, and this will be actually, if it's on piers, it'll act as a backdrop to this entry sequence. Kind of coming around here, up some steps and to the entry. And again, the building is acting as this filter for all the views. And then we have you know, a more solid element, private element here uh, sitting to the south. So the guests have, they're capturing great sunlight. And in this main living volume is actually getting morning light and potentially afternoon light if we start shaping the roof. You know, if we made this a shed roof, it's gonna capture all this afternoon light here. The design process is essentially the same, whether you're designing small outposts like this or you're working on an airport. You process a lot of information, you know, to evaluate all these constraints and all your opportunities, and then you try and make something beautiful out of it all. It would be really difficult to do better than what's here already. So really, I see my job as just finding a way to respect that. Where's the screened-in porch? Okay, there isn't a screened-in porch. Um, and I, 